Hello world, hello world. Welcome back to my channel. Call me Biz. Ralphie May. Too big to ignore. This is um $97 salad. I'll be honest with you, I was surprised at how funny he is. Another thing, I was surprised at how raw his comedy was. Uh, so, so that's dope, man. I'm excited to watch this. Look, if you enjoy this content, please hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you like the video. Leave a comment. Let me know that you are here. Uh, if you ain't got nothing to say, just be like, I was here. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's love. All right, no more ghost watching. Let's get to it. Latinos, y'all are under assault everywhere I go. I was in Arizona, and the white people there have invented a law where they're pulling people over for driving Mexican, okay? I swear to God, right? if you've got four to nine people in your car, good luck going through Phoenix, Jack. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Everybody gets pulled over. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sarge, we got an 84 Chevy Silverado, blue on blue, with three lawnmowers in the back. Pull that son of a bitch over. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I told all my friends in Arizona, I don't care if you're white, black, or brown, don't leave home without your wallet in Arizona. Well, you're trying to explain how you ain't Mexican. You'll be eating a dry bologna sandwich on a bus ride down to Mexicali. Go, I swear to God, my name's Brandon. <laughs> I was just mowing my own yard. Yeah, what happened? I don't even speak Spanish. Look, none of my teeth are silver or baby size. Look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the people who made this law up have really thought it all out, you know? Think about it, folks. If we get rid of all the Mexicans, not for nothing, how are we going to move? Everybody I know uses Mexicans. White people, black people, Mexicans use Mexicans, okay? <laughs> I'm not talking about well-nourished American Mexicans with good bone structure and proper nutrition. I'm talking about those little mojados, those ones that sneak over the border that you get at the Home Depot, three for $50, or for $100, 12 of them will show up, and uh, with three old ladies and abuela and two tias, okay? It takes them 17 minutes, 17 minutes, and they move all your stuff out of the house onto one pickup truck, one. <laughs> In an upside down pyramid, they stack it. It's incredible. I'll Amazing honest, engineering. Amazing. Hard, I, I, no I, I, rope. I, I, no I rope. The they just no throw rope. the littlest Mexican up on top and he holds down two mattresses and a coffee table. It's incredible. For that 17 no minutes, rope. your whole house looks like that movie Apocalypto. There's a. Uh, <laughs> little Aztec Indians jumping around, popping up. One of them is praying to catch a koala in the corner. Go, yeah, catch a koala, ka, ka. All right. And as soon as they're done, here come the three old ladies sweeping, mopping, dusting, washing everything down with that uh, purple water, that Fabuloso or something like that. I don't know. That ain't from America. That stuff is bona fide. That gets off third world dirt. Like, you got a, you got a cholera outbreak. You get that Fabuloso, Jack. That stuff cleans everything, son. It like punks out Mr. Clean thing. like he's a bitch, okay? <laughs> that Fabuloso is the real the deal. I go the fantastical way. I call it ghost water, all right? Because that's what it does. It, it just, it's a metal strip paint, man. If you let it sit on there too long, and these old ladies are cleaning everything. You're standing in the former shell of your house going, why are we moving? This is amazing. <laughs> It was our crap that was messing this house up. Man, Mexicans are amazingly clean. It's funny, when I did that joke, I, I was telling this joke, and, and you know, I, I tell people that's where the term spick and span comes from. And uh, <laughs> look it up, look it up. Because Mexicans are so clean, see? Yo, See, at first you think it's going to be a racial wild. slur, then it turns out to be a racial compliment. Now it's prejudice. I, mean, I love that. Stuff. I was doing this joke in Orange County, California, about a month and a half ago, and when I did it, uh, a white lady stood up and said, We have to get rid of all those Mexicans. They're ruining our country. And I was just amazed at her racism, you know? And it's weird coming from somebody from the South, you know? You'd expect I'd have heard outbursts like that before in my life, 
But in the South, you know, I mean, I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, raised up in a little town in Arkansas called Clarksville, and moved to Texas when I was 18. I mean, I'm, I'm Southern as it gets, okay? And I've never heard racial bile spilled like this. At least in the South, we have the good graces and the decorum to whisper our racial slurs, you know? <laughs> You don't know this about me, but I grew up uh, spending my summers in a little town even smaller than my hometown in South Arkansas called Delight, okay? And it's where my grandfather, A.D. May, had his farm. And it was a beef cattle farm, and in his older age, it didn't have that big a herd, but he thought that the neighbors were taking cattle and replacing the tags. And so he went back to Brandon, old school Brandon. And my brother, being nearly six years my senior, had no problem flipping these cattle on their ass, and my grandfather, hold, you know, he hold them down and lay that brand on them. Me, I was a dumpy 11-year-old that I held on. That's all I did, okay? <laughs> I held on, and hopefully the cow would trip over my uh, dumpy ass, okay, and fall down. <laughs> right, but that day was a hard day for me. I got beat up by cattle, okay? I mean, beat the hell, drug through cow flop, hot, hot cow trap. I mean, hot. <laughs> Way warm. Well, you think cold is bad? Cold's not nearly as bad as hot. Hot is way worse. Pee, everything, and got kicked in the goddamn head I don't know how many times. All right. By the way, after a day like that, when your grandfather has to hose you off in the yard for you can even come into the house, okay? All right. Nothing tastes better than a cheeseburger because you're angry as hell. Fuck that cow. But my grandfather taught me how to drag them down. What you got to do is let them run past you a little bit and then grab the, either on their ear or the little nubbin horn and push down. And when that turns their head, you pull their head up like this and, and they either have the choice of getting their neck broke or going with you. And their own momentum, if you just fall back, will sling you up on them and they'll be laying there on the ground. And that's what I had to do to that lady. <laughs> I had to uh, let that bitch run past me a little bit, then snatch her ass up. So I was like, ma'am, I'm with you. Let's, let's get rid of them Mexicans. I'll buy the gas for the bus, just as soon as you can tell me who's going to pick our fruits and vegetables. She goes, excuse me? Uh, well, ma'am, see, 99% of our produce comes to market through Latino hands. Without them, uh, we have no fruits or vegetables in our grocery stores. Not mine. I get mine at Whole Foods. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you are adorable. Okay, listen, dummy. Um, they might have hippies out front at the Whole Foods, but everybody doing the real work are the Mexicans out back, okay? But you're right, ma'am. All the Mexicans at Whole Foods are 100% organic, and that's what matters. <laughs> so... <laughs> Then this racist man. was like, we'll get a machine to do it. And I'm like, well, ma'am, you know, not for nothing, for all of our technology, our satellite phones and TVs and everything, we've never been able to vent a machine that knows which tomato to pick and which one to leave hanging, which grape to cut and which one to leave on the vine. The machine we invented was Mexicans. And they're perfect. <laughs> They're generally shorter. Uh, they have, uh, they're generally shorter of stature. That means they have less. Okay, all right, because I feel it already. People go, that's a dick move, Ralphie. All right. Okay, all right, watch. Okay. Um, I am five foot nine and a half, okay? Average American male height is five foot eight inches, okay? Watch as I attempt to pick low lying fruits and vegetables, okay? Watch. <laughs> See, I had to bring my back to a nearly 90 degree angle. Over the course of the day, that would make for extreme amounts of lower back pain and fatigue, making me, A, a very poor employee, okay? He's now, really watch as the average Mexican national attempts the same thing. <laughs> Perfect sense, right? Perfect sense. They're awesome. I mean, he's making sense, though. Then she goes, we'll get white people to do it. And I'm like, man, why do you think the Mexicans are here now? Because we can't get white people to do it, okay? But let's just go with your premise, okay? 
first of all, are you native Californians? He goes, yes, I am. Okay. And is that your son with you? Yes, it is. And I'm like, well, ma'am, that boy is allergic to work. Okay. He's never had to work hard. Okay. Uh, with his little cool little Justin Bieber haircut and his <laughs> flip flops and his skate park pass. He's adorable, but he's never really worked. Okay. He doesn't know hard work. Okay. Hard physical labor. He lasts an hour working like a Mexican. Okay. If you could even get him out there to do it. You know, he's too busy doing this. Ooh. <laughs> okay. All right, that boy is allergic to work, okay? That's all you can say. It's the truth, all right? Plus, you've never known a time without Mexican labor. This is California, a ton of people. California was chock full of Mexicans back when it was called Mexico, okay? <laughs> That's something we all forget is that there's a lot of Mexicans that never crossed the border. The border crossed them, all right? Bars. They're like, I guess we stay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm like, ma'am, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, you're just dumb, okay? You, okay, let's say we could get white people to do it. What would it cost you? $30 an hour to get white people to work like Mexicans? Probably more. And then there's other costs along with it, like free sunblock. How much money are you going to spend in sunblock with white people? You get somebody as pale as me or this fat guy or that white dude, okay? out there in the field with that much direct light, we'll blow up, okay? <laughs> Boom! What happened to Bob? He wasn't wearing his damn SPFs. That's what happened to Bob. Change the sign. Zero days since last accident. <laughs> Look, you sons of bitches. You either wear your sunblock or you come out here in a beekeeper outfit, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna have OSHA crawl out my ass for this crap because you sons of bitches won't wear your goddamn sunblock. You hear me? Plus, Where's white people are lazy. White people, we invented the three-day weekend. That's how lazy we are. <laughs> it's the truth. Nobody wants to admit it. How white people are, no, we're not lazy. Ah, come on, stop. <laughs> really? Okay, President's Day? Really? Does anyone sit around and wonder about the Taft administration on President's Day? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Memorial Day? Mexicans don't know about, about Memorial Day. That's a Monday to a Mexican. That's a work day. We got to work on Monday, make money, all right? Uh, Labor Day is the biggest crock of crap all of all time. Okay, in honor of everyone that's working, we're not going to. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It just doesn't make any sense. And 4th of July, that's just between the 3rd and the 5th of July for Mexican, okay? All right, one day for Mexicans, Cinco de Mayo. You better have cold beer on May 5th. Yeah. But that's one day as opposed to 23 for white people. That's nearly a full month of added productivity you're going to get out of a Mexican national that you can never get out of a white American. Do you understand? Okay, let's put it in basic terms. If white people pick your fruits and vegetables, your salad's going to cost $97. <laughs> You want a cheeseburger, three fifty. You want pickles on it, twelve bucks. <laughs> Damn, labor is high. <laughs> Are those magic pickles? What the hell is going on? <laughs> and then this white lady goes, "I guess we'll get somebody else." And I'm like, "Who, ma'am? Who? Who? I I don't know. I guess black people." And I'm like, "Ah!" <laughs> I see some black guys about to stand Yo, up. Hold on, Playboys. I got this. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay. I was like. Ma'am, if you oh, think you're shit. getting black people back in the same fields they got out of 150 years ago, you are smoking crack, okay? I hate to break it to you, but you can't get a black man to go into a big backyard and pick a movie, much less a fruit <laughs> or a vegetable. Am I lying or am I dying? You retarded. You are dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> Just dumb. Look. Uh, Mexicans do work hard. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. Me Mexicans work hard. Um, but uh, the thing about the labor that he's saying, I feel like it's more than just, you know, well, I don't know, probably the white people part, but generally immigrants usually work harder because you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta understand that like their circumstances, they are coming in a place and a lot of a lot of different countries are not like are not like America. Like that's why you see as the generation grow, they get more like the more Americanized they get, I guess the lazier they get. But 
most other countries you you typically gotta wake up and, and work and do something every day to eat <laughs> to live like you gotta you gotta actively be doing some shit just to live in America, you could live on nothing. In America, not only you could live on nothing, you could have zero dollars in your bank account. And you could still use that bank card. <laughs> like, there's no zero in America. Yo, homeless niggas got cell phones and shit. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You can't even hand a homeless person some food. They gonna be like, what's in it? I'm allergic to this, this, that. Like, yo, it's poverty, but it's like, it's soft poverty for real. You feel me? Cause any at any moment, if you don't have mental issues, you could kind of pick it up and go trying to do something, right? So when these immigrants come in, they 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 are coming in with a whole different mentality. Like they'll do any job. They're looking at everything like a stepping stone. So you say, like, like you said, Mexicans work hard. But if you look at Mexicans, like immigration with Mexicans, usually the first generation come in, right? They work extremely hard. They all cuddle up together in like one house, like 90 of them niggas in that same house. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm saying? They use one car and then they save money. Then they buy the house next door. Then they save money. Then they buy... Next thing you know, the next generation, their kids go to college, get a degree. By the third generation, they're already doing better than most motherfuckers who's been here for hundreds of years so you see what i'm saying and and i guess the africans they have that same mentality and the indians and the indians they get all the loans america just want indians to win <laughs> like, they, they come here by like by like two fucking three years they own everything like it's like how i thought you came here with nothing but anyways yeah so i'm saying like just to, to put more nuance into like what he said but he's hilarious though uh <laughs> As far as black people being in the fields, I, I feel like uh, now black people are like, look, man, we don't do niggas done did a whole lot of shit. All right. Now we want to be in the AC, you feel me, rooms. We want to be the executives. We want to do shit like we want to chill like y'all chilling, like for real. So, man, shout out to Ralphie, man. Ralphie is hilarious. Uh, yeah. Oh, one thing I do disagree, though. I do think that. Uh, I do think Southern racism is like they more bold with it in the South than they are uh, up North. Up North is so fake. I, I feel like people from up North are, are more racist, but people from down South, they like, like the racist ones will let you know, like, you know, like they'll let you know. Sometimes it's not even about racism. They just don't fuck with yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the racist ones will let, will let you know. So, so up north, right? They'll do slick little shit like, oh, not hire you for jobs or whatever. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Down south, they'll hire you, but they'll let you know. I kind of don't fuck with you a little bit just by bold ass actions. I don't know if you see what I'm what, what I'm trying to say. Like it, it's different. I feel like up north, the racism is hidden. It's more like passive aggressive because everybody want to be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with this. I, I like my racism bold. Let me know you don't fuck with me. But anyways, y'all let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. And also, let me know what's next from Ralphie May. I got you. If you made it this far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you like the video. Leave a comment. Let me know that you are here. And I will see y'all in the next one. And guess what? You better be there. Peace.